Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi, and welcome to this two part series on how to improve the performance of Lightroom. Now, Lightroom is a very resource intensive application, and you'll find that as you guys get quicker and more efficient in Lightroom, that the actual software itself is going to be what's slowing you down. You're going to be sitting there waiting for Lightroom to render previews and to make changes. So, it's important that we kind of go over uh, these tips as far as how to improve Lightroom's performance. Now this tutorial is going to give you 10 tips on how to improve the performance uh, of Lightroom on your machine without anything extra. We're going to talk about Lightroom uh, preferences, we're going to be talking about settings, system settings, things that you can do right now to make Lightroom run faster. Um, the second part of this tutorial is going to be basically a hardware guide. Uh, we're going to teach you guys which components to upgrade first to get kind of the biggest performance boost out of uh, Lightroom on your system. All right, guys, so let's get started with 10 tips that we can do right away to improve Lightroom's performance. We're going to start first with our import settings, and we're going to move to our preferences, then to workflow, and then some general system settings. So let's jump right into the import dialog box. So we're going to go to import, and let's discuss uh, tip number one, our import settings. So number one is under file handling, we want to make sure that render previews is set to minimal. Now what this is going to do is make sure that basically as we're importing, it's not spending a lot of extra time sitting there rendering uh, additional previews for our images. This is important because if you're importing set, like lots of cards or if you're importing off of hard drives, you're going to save a lot of time from Lightroom having to sit there after each card and after every uh, import to sit there and render full size previews or any other size other than minimal. So make sure it's set to minimal and then before we actually start working, I'm going to teach you guys how to render your previews because we do want to do it before we start working. All right, so once we have that, we're going to go down to Apply During Import Panel. And in this Apply During Import Panel, we want to make a few changes. Um, number one is our develop settings. If there's any develop settings that you can apply to all of your images, it's best to do it here. It's best to apply your develop settings, metadata, and keywords right in import, at least as much as possible, right in the import dialog box so that when images come into Lightroom, the previews that are rendered with it are based on uh, those develop settings, they're based on everything that you, you say specify here. Now if you're shooting weddings, this might not be uh, kind of the most effective thing because most likely from scene to scene those develop settings are going to be changing quite a bit. But if you're shooting say products, well you're probably setting up an entire scene and shooting it all the same way and so you can actually set your develop settings based on uh, based on you know your typical settings for that scene. So you could actually import them and have them all batch edited right there or all batch processed. Alright so in particular make sure if you possible you can set your develop settings also setting metadata and your keywords wherever, where possible will also save time. Basically what we want to avoid is when you make large sync changes in Lightroom so if you're selecting say 50, 100 or 200 however many images and making large syncs whether it be develop settings or metadata Lightroom's going to pause and it's going to have to make additional calculations particularly when it has to render new uh, previews for the develop settings. So we want to kind of avoid that as much as possible and take care of it right here in import. Alright so we're done with our import settings. Let's jump out of this. I'm going to hit escape and now we're going to go discuss some preference settings. So let's go to the edit menu. We're going to go to preferences. You can also hit control comma to get there. And the first thing we're going to do is under file handling we're going to change the size of our camera raw cache setting. So this is tip number two. Change the size of your camera raw cache setting to a size that's appropriate. Now how do you know what's appropriate? Well I'm going to pull up the calculator real fast. Alright so you typically want to set your camera raw uh, cache setting to a size that is uh, equivalent to what your average job would be. Uh, maybe make it a little bit larger if possible. But basically what camera raw cache that that folder is doing is it's allowing Lightroom to store all the previews for your the images that you're working on inside of a, a folder on your hard drive where it can quickly access the information so it can basically quickly show you these previews. The larger this cache is the more space it's going to take up but the quicker it will be able to access those preview files. Okay so I kind of have a little rule of thumb so I would say uh, for us, the typical size of our jobs, we shoot weddings. So a typical wedding is about an eight hour day, we'll come back with 2,000 images from, for one photographer. So I'll take that and I'll multiply it by our average file size. So we're shooting small raw, let's say our average file size is uh, 10 megabytes each. So I get 20 gigabytes and then what I do is I typically will add like 5 gigabytes just to be safe. Well, not 5, but 5,000, sorry. So I'm going to set mine to 25 gigabytes. Uh, of space and that's what I have here. So what you typically want to do, I mean what we do because my my 
I'm using SSD drives on my machine and they're fairly limited in size. I have my working drive is only 256 gigabytes. I set this to 25 gigabytes so basically I can work on one entire job at a time. If you guys have huge hard drives like you know one terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte drives or however large they are, um, you can set your raw camera raw cache folder a lot larger and still be safe. So for us we kind of keep it small just so that at least at the minimal you can work on one complete job at a time and have every image from that job stored in your camera raw cache folder. All right, tip number three is your camera raw cache folder location. Okay, now what I would recommend is if you have an internal drive other than your operating system drive, choose a different drive. Um, but do not choose an external drive. If you choose an external USB drive uh, to save your camera raw cache settings, you're hindering Lightroom's performance. You're essentially tying a ball and chain to Lightroom because number one, USB uh, external USB drives themselves are very slow and also the connection is very slow. So always, always use an internal drive, um, but your, your best option is to use a drive that's not your operating system drive. If you have no choice, use your operating system drive. So you can see if I hit choose, uh, my operating system is C and I've selected the WIP, which is drive D, and this is my 256 gigabyte uh, SSD drive, which I use just for editing images. All right, so I have my raw cache folder right here. It's Lightroom 3 cache. Um, that's where I store my, my cache files. All right, so we're done with our file handling preferences. Let's close this out. And now let's go into our catalog settings. You can get there by hitting Control, Alt, and Comma, or by just selecting it in the Edit menu. So we can pull up catalog settings. So tip number four is choose a standard preview size that is most appropriate for your monitor and your resolution. Now I'm typically editing on uh, 24 to 27 inch monitors that run at high resolution 1920 by 1200. So I'm going to choose a standard preview size at 2048. Now this isn't going to matter too much because I'm not typically using standard preview size, but it's still good to set a preview size based on you know your monitor size. Uh, my preview quality is set to high. If you're on like say a 17 inch monitor, you're running 1280 by 1080 or you're running kind of smaller resolutions, then you can afford to get away with 1440 pixels or even 1024 pixels. So kind of choose a preview size based on your resolution, choose a preview, preview quality based on your system settings. Um, and then that'll kind of help as Lightroom has to generate those standard previews. But again, we're not having Lightroom generate those standard previews, uh, at least based on this workflow, on import, we're going to do it later. So this is going to have a huge effect if you guys follow this, but still in general it's good to set this for your catalog settings. Do remember that these catalog settings are catalog specific, so you do need to set it for each catalog. Next thing, tip number five is go to your metadata and I want you guys all to turn off automatically write changes into XMP. Now unless you absolutely need to have your changes in XMP format, do not have this item selected because basically what it's doing is every single time you make a change to one of your files, it's writing that information to a sidecar file. So it's essentially duplicating the amount of uh, the work you're doing. Now if you're going image by image making these changes, it's not going to slow down too much. But if you're sitting there and you're batch editing and you select 100 images and you have it uh, do a batch sync across those 100 images, it's going to also have to take twice the amount of time to write those settings into XMP. Let me be clear, probably 99% of you have absolutely no reason to be using XMP files. Um, if you guys think you might need XMP files, well go check out chapter 8. In chapter 8 of the Lightroom Guide we discuss XMP files in complete detail, what situations you will need them in, um, when they're useful, but essentially if you're just editing your images in Lightroom, uh, in Lightroom as well as in Photoshop, which is probably what 99% of you are doing, you have absolutely no need for XMP files and it's just using up extra system resources and processing power to uh, create them. Okay, so turn that off and we are done in our catalog settings. Let's close this out. All right, now tip number six is to optimize your catalog. When your catalog files get very large, and I'm not talking about like say a couple hundred images or even a couple thousand, I'm talking about when it gets up to 10, 15, 20, 30,000 images, that's when it's probably good to optimize your catalog. And the way you do that is to go up in the file menu, and then you wanna go to optimize catalog right here under open recent in between import photos. That's gonna bring up this little dialog box. It's gonna say your catalog was last optimized on this date. If it's been running slowly, then you know, it'll recommend that you optimize it and you click optimize, it'll take a few minutes to do it. Um, now, typically for us, each job is its own 
catalog. And so we typically aren't using optimized catalog because jobs aren't getting any larger than three, four, five thousand 5,000 images at the most. But if you do have large catalog sizes, uh, then it, it is good to optimize your catalog. All right, that brings us to our workflow. So when we're about to start actually working on an image, you'll notice that if we go to the Lightroom Develop module, and these might already have the previews rendered, but if we go from image to image, you'll add, oh, it doesn't look like, you'll see how as I go from image to image, it shows this loading. Now, it is loading right now off of SSD drives on my machine, so it's fairly quick, but it still slows me down when I'm trying to go quickly through my images. So to prevent Lightroom from having to show that little loading sign every single time I go from image to image in the Develop module. What I want to do is I'm going to go back to my library module, make sure that I have all my uh, photos available for view. They don't necessarily all have to be selected, but there can't be any filters on. So just make sure that you turn filters off so that there's no filters. You see everything in the catalog. All right, so now before we start working on any images, what we're going to do is go to library, go to previews, and then you're going to say render one-to-one -one previews. This is when we're actually going to render our previews. It's right before we're actually going to work on them. And then you're going to say build all. Now, so long as no filters are selected, when you say build all, it's going to scan all existing previews for the 22 files that are in my catalog file, and it's going to build every single preview. I'm going to cancel this process. It will take a little bit of time. Now, if you're running let's say if your catalog files uh, or catalog size is around 100 images it'll probably take maybe 5-10 minutes depending on your computer speed and your hard drive speed and everything like that but if you are say shooting weddings where you have three four five thousand images in a single catalog this might take hours depending on your system speed so what I would recommend is the day before you're gonna start working on your images um, what I typically do is that before I start working on a wedding say I, I'm gonna work on it tomorrow well tonight before I go to bed I'll just start that render uh, I'll just start that preview rendering process so that when I get up and, and get to it it's done um, now this computer is pretty dang fast because it's running SSD drives um, so usually what I'll do is I, I can set it to render previews go to lunch and then within an hour I come back and my 3,000 4,000 images have preview files rendered but it's actually crucial to have those previews rendered because that way when I go into my develop module and I'm sitting there clicking from image to image I'm not waiting for Lightroom to do any rendering all right, guys, now let's talk about some general settings that you guys can pay attention to to kind of improve the performance of Lightroom. Watch your catalog size. And by catalog size, I mean the number of images that are in your catalogs. There's really no reason to have uh, catalog sizes with, you know, tens of thousands of images or hundreds of thousands of images. I know there's a lot of people that do it. They'll say, well, I'm going to have a catalog for this entire year, and everything that I shoot this year is going to go into this catalog. Well, you're probably going to end up with 50,000 or 100,000 images by the end of the year, and that just becomes a massive catalog file. That's when Optimize becomes crucial because your catalog files are so large. Lightroom will slow down depending on catalog size. So as your catalog sizes get larger, expect Lightroom to slow down. That's why it's good to have uh, independent catalogs for every single event that you're working on. That way each catalog file, each event, is running at its optimal speed. Tip number nine, and I know that this isn't how it is on my system right now, is to make sure that your hard drive space, especially the drives that you're working on, have at least 25% or more free at all times. Um, with your operating system drive, you never want your operating system drive to have less than 25% free um, because it will slow down your operating system. So they recommend optimally that you want to have at least 50% available, especially on your OS drive as well as on your work and process drive. The larger and, and the more filled up these hard drives get, the closer they get to capacity, the slower they're going to be. So right now my system, I'm running off two SSDs, so one is only 128 gigabytes and one is 256, and I'm kind of uh, transferring a lot of files right now, which is why they're this full, but typically they're not nearly as full, especially when I'm working on my weddings or working on these jobs. I want to keep it very free so that there's plenty of space for the operating system as well as for Lightroom to do its thing. All right, guys, now tip number 10 is one more system tip, and that is to make sure that you frequently run disk defrag on your hard drive. Now, for people running Windows, you're going to go to Windows, um, just type in, I'm on Windows 7, so I can just go to Search, and then type in defrag, and automatically it shows up defrag and disk defragmenter, um, the same thing. So just select disk defragmenter, choose the hard drive. Uh, if you're running multiple hard drives, internal hard drives, make sure you do defrag on your operating system as well as on your work and process drive, whatever drive you're using for Lightroom. 
Now if you're running a Mac, I believe you get there by going to uh, your disk utility, which should be from application to utilities to the disk utility, and you can run defrag from there as well. I think it's under the uh, repair disk permissions button. Alright guys, I'm not too familiar with my Mac. I actually run my Mac typically in Windows, so I don't use uh, my Apple OS that much. Alright guys, so that's 10 tips you guys can start using right away to improve Lightning's performance on your machine.